in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We do not understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Here's to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for what your word reveals to us about Jesus. And we thank you also for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we pray word and spirit be united this morning to change our hearts and lives for your glory. Amen. Well, there are um, probably things in life that can make us feel more valued. When someone perhaps uses our name, when someone gives us time and attention, when someone speaks our particular language of love. And we all have within us a deep longing to belong, to be accepted, to essentially be loved, wanted, desired, valued, and welcomed. For most of our lives, we'll be seeking those things in other people. From both, it will be our primary caregivers who we're celebrating today, but as more people enter into our lives and our awareness of them increases, so is grow, uh, so is desires grow within us as well. We want our teachers to like us. We want bosses to trust us, friends to accept us, spouses to choose us, children to love us, and so it goes on. And within all of these relationships, there is a superpower that all of us behold. That is the ability to listen and to listen well. We feel incredibly valued when we feel heard and seen. And the flip side of that is that we can feel incredibly rejected if we feel ignored or less important than, say, someone's mobile phone. Eventually in life, we realize that to be accepted by other people is one thing, but to be accepted by God is something else altogether. The God who made us, made us and knows us. The God who knows the deepest parts of us, even those parts we wish to hide from others. Yet he still wants relationship with us. And that God, as we'll be remembering in a few weeks' time, went to extraordinary lengths to make relationship with us possible. He welcomes us, accepts us, and in him we find our true belonging. And that true sense of belonging, of being welcomed as you are, is not the same as fitting in where we have to change who we are to be accepted, but is about being accepted as God made us. And in Christ, we truly belong. And here in the passage that we've just had read, as we focus in this Lenten season of who Jesus is, we're thinking today about Jesus being the one who hears our prayers, who is attentive to us and truly hears us. 
I remember uh, studying lots of uh, different religions at university when I was doing religious studies, and I was struck by how many of them seem to be focused on hoping that we do enough to appease our God, whoever that God may be, without ever truly knowing whether we do or not. But in Jesus, we see a God who has chosen to come and be one of us. And when walking with his disciples on earth, is attentive to their every request. And that he's inviting us to share with him through the gift of prayer. He says to the disciples up until this point, you have not asked, but you can ask. This isn't a God who's too busy for us. This is a God who is almost saying and inviting and bidding, as he does in this passage, why aren't you asking more? And he loves it when we do. In Revelation, there's this beautiful picture of a bowl filled with incense rising up to the heart of God. And that bowl is your prayers and my prayers, like sweet-smelling incense to God's heart. And here we see Jesus in human form, actively listening, listening as much to what isn't being said as he, as he is to what is being said. And it's important to note here that when Jesus says what he says, and then the disciples go away and start muttering away to themselves, and Jesus is looking on at what they're doing, he's not using some clever mind-reading trick here by saying, oh, I think you're thinking this. He's just using his observance, his humanity. He's understanding the questions that what he said may be raising in their minds and in their hearts and in their thoughts. And so he approaches them and said, are you asking about this? What is it particularly you want to know? And then he beautifully expands what he's talking about using this wonderful analogy of a mother and a child. He talks about sorrow turning into joy at what's to come. He's trying to unpack the disciples, prepare them for what is coming, both the sorrow and the joy to come. And as he makes those statements, he's listening to how they're responding. He's listening to what their thoughts may be heading to. And he's responding with further explanation and further grace. He is a one who listens, the God who listens to our prayers. And as beautiful as that is, and as we hold on to that, we're also very aware of the reality that sometimes it can feel like that's not the case. Sometimes it can feel like he's not listening. Sometimes it can feel like our prayers are going unanswered. It's not as simple as God just giving us all of our heart's desires, as nice as that would be, but that does veer slightly into a prosperity gospel, which is far from helpful or good. But it's about knowing that Jesus sees a bigger picture that we don't see. Elsewhere in scripture, it's put as his ways and not our ways. But what about those times when it feels like we're asking something that so clearly seems to be in line with God and so clearly seems to be in line with what God would want? Maybe praying for a loved one to know him. Maybe praying for someone who's sick or suffering. These things seem to be in line with God's nature, God's character, God's heart. But as Pete Gregg, uh, the founder of 24-7 Prayer Movement, helpfully puts it in one of his many amazing books on the subject, whenever we ask God for anything in prayer, we need to be aware of a number of dynamics at play. Firstly, there is God's world, then there is God's war and God's will. Now, what does he mean by those? Well, firstly, God's world. There are things that happen in this world because that's the way the world is. And he gives a very uh, simple, but I think a quite helpful analogy. Imagine a Saturday morning in September. And in a beautiful town in a Cotswold village, a bride is on her knees praying for sunshine, praying for it to be the most beautiful day she's ever known. Round the corner on his knees is a farmer desperately praying for rain. The weather will do what the weather will do. That is God's world and the way he made it. 
Secondly, there is God's war. As Paul writes in Ephesians, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers, those unseen things in the heavenly realms. And all of that, everything that Paul says about that is all in the context of him talking about prayer. That when we pray, there is a battle raging and it's God's battle. Yes, we may uh, get caught up in the effects of it at times, but this is God's battle. There are times when we pray that God is fighting a battle we do not see and cannot fully comprehend. And so in that time, we just need to know and trust that he is fighting on our behalf when we pray. And then there is God's will. This concept of God having a bigger picture than we can possibly have, of God seeing things and knowing things that we could not possibly see or know, of his ways not being our ways. And we are invited every day through prayer, through our study, through our fellowship, through our worship, to learn more about God's heart for our world and for ourselves. And the more we know his heart, the more we find that our wills become aligned with his will over time. And so the things we ask for may change as well. And in all of this, in all of this talk about prayer, about God listening, there is an invitation, an invitation to relationship with the God who wants relationship with us. It's about keeping that door to communication open and knowing that he is listening, actively listening, and that what matters to you also matters to him because you matter to him. It's about learning to know that you belong to him. And so that relationship is the primary goal of our prayers. Not the answers to the prayers, but the relationship of talking to him. Whether those prayers are answered how we want or not. An answered prayer leads us hopefully to gratitude. An unanswered prayer leads us hopefully to deeper trust. An unprayed prayer doesn't lead to very much at all other than disconnection. As John Wimber once said about praying for miracles, when I pray, sometimes things happen. When I don't pray, not very much seems to happen. And let's not forget forget that in all of this, In the context of the passage of what Jesus is saying, we have the mixture here of the Lenten sorrow of the disciples turning to the resurrection joy. In our prayers, there is always the hope of resurrection joy. And that's the invitation on offer for all of us to know the risen Jesus, to know that he sees you, he hears you, He loves you. He welcomes you. That you belong in him. And that desperate need you have for belonging that we are all born with is only ever fully realized and satisfied in the person of Jesus Christ who hears us. Amen.